So we're here today talking with Marty Butwinick about his guitar teaching. He is a guitar teacher with a profile on findaguitarteacher.com. Um, Marty, thank you so much for joining us. You're welcome very much. It should be fun. I love doing interviews and sharing what I do. Absolutely. That's great. So first, can you tell us where you're located specifically in what state and what city and what section of that city? Well, I'm located in Glendale, California. Mm -hmm. It's like Southern California. Glendale is between Los Angeles and Pasadena. Yes. And I'm easy access, and so when my locals come from the entire surrounding area around me, mm -hmm. and of course when I do Skype, I'm going rather global, which is very cool. Yes, absolutely. And do you ever travel to students' homes to teach them, or does everybody come to you either via Skype or physically in person? I rarely go to somebody's home. Okay. Every now and then I do that, but I teach out of my house right now. I like to do about, I have about 18 students right now, so just due to my schedule between that and being a player and other things too, I'm also a music copyist, uh, people come to my house, and I go to their house sometimes, but cost-wise it's sometimes a little prohibitive for people. Makes sense, makes sense. And um, what do you find the guitar teaching climate is like where you are? Do you find that there's a lot of interest in guitar and a lot of people want to learn? Well, that's interesting because, of course, guitar is probably the most popular instrument that there is. Absolutely. So there's always people. Um, mm -hmm. As I get my YouTube channel together, there's like 18 gazillion high-quality and low-quality guitar videos. And so here in L.A., I mean, I'm sort of living in one of the hubs of the world. And so there's all kinds of people wanting to learn guitar. Therefore, there's all kinds of teachers from your pure metal teacher to your bluegrass teacher mm -hmm. to your music store teacher who might or might not be very good to there's a whole giant climb of guitar instructors um, covering a wide range of things. So sure. you could say competition could be a lot, but it's a big city. Absolutely. And what kind of styles do you find that people are the most interested in? And actually, as a second part to the question, what kind of styles do you offer? Well, it's funny. It's it's an interesting question. I have like this giant variety of students because I also do piano and I do bass. Uh -huh. So I because I deal with um, beginners through advanced. And for example, some of my I have this one one of my my Chicago Skype student is an extremely advanced jazz guitarist. Yeah. He's like he knows more stuff than I do on it. Mm -hmm. But I'm helping him put the pieces together because he's got so much theory and so much thinking and this scale, this blah, blah. I'm helping him refine into soloing over jazz tunes. Yes. Whereas I have people who've wanted to learn funk or bluegrass or country or light classical um, or light flamenco. I'm not really a classical teacher per se. So it's really... All in every style I will get. I've had like metal students with drop D to... Sure. Everything that there is, because sort of my thing is people generally end up coming to me because there's something special that they need mm -hmm. that sometimes somebody else hasn't discovered yet, and that's my quest to find out what is it. Mm -hmm. So how to, how to draw them out in terms of their artistry on guitar, is that kind of what you're talking about? Yeah, how to draw them out, mm -hmm. but also how to like really specifically target what they need. Like, for example, my Drop D metal student, mm -hmm. um, he knew Drop D. Mm. He knew some basic fingerings about things, Yes. but he wanted to form his original band, and he's like, well, what do I need to do? Well, he thought everything he needed to do was guitar-oriented, and none of it was guitar-oriented. That was easy. He needed rhythm. Mm. It's his rhythm. So as we analyzed Avenged Sevenfold's albums, it was really fun for me because yeah. I have a big rock and classical and jazz background. So he needed the rhythm. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and so when it comes to the style, it's I have another student. He's my Manila Skype student. He kind of okay. did uh, like a Manila Skype student. That's sure. cool. Absolutely. Yeah, he was like pretty much YouTube born and friends. Uh -huh. Because he loved Dave Matthews. He loved Pearl Jam. He's like, I have these goals to sing and play, clean up the rhythm. So, yeah, we used those styles, but then what he needed was ear training and mm -hmm. rhythm studies. And so we put ear training and rhythm studies mm -hmm. together. Mm -hmm. so I like to dig down into that bottom bass, and then it applies sure. every style that exists. Of and course. 
I guess, hopefully, an answer to your question. That's totally an answer to my question. It leads me, in many ways, you're already answering my next question, which is, how would you describe your style of teaching and your approach to teaching a student? It sounds like you're really getting in there into those kind of more basic foundational concepts with all your students. I do, and that's sort of like my joy. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like mm-hmm. I started playing like piano when I was five, then I did woodwinds for eight years, then I did rock surf guitar, then I got into bass, then I got classical and formal university and all of that. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people I find get frustrated when they're given things to do that don't necessarily really relate to what they want or who they are, etc. So I'll give a standard beginning instrument lesson of here's how you hold it and here's note names and here's what it is, you know, and yeah. and, and I'll show them basic technique, I'll go, well, here's an exercise, and here's this kind of a scale to play, etc. Yes. And whatever they need to do, or whether it's a finger-picking style, we'll get technique down. But then, I've pretty much broken this whole teaching area down to like nine zones. Mm-hmm. Really? Okay. Everything falls into nine zones, period. You have rhythm, you have melody, you have ear perception, you have uh-huh. chords, etc. So yeah. my edge is like finding out some initial goals yes. and targeting just what that student needs. Mm-hmm. Some people say, I want to be a great player and be able to sit in with anybody and do anything. I'm like, fine. Hardcore curriculum of a standard procedure of what goes through it. Mm-hmm. And so it really is tailored to, tailored to each individual and targeting the goal. Like one of my... One of my newer students who's actually performing in an upcoming Beck concert with her band, The Lonely Wild, which is really cool. She plays guitar and trumpet in the band. Yes. Hello, but uh-huh. she plays. And so, but she needs to get her singing and playing ready. So we're doing hardcore technique. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's it. Whereas I have another Skype student in, she's in, a, where is she? Minnesota. Okay. All we're doing is strumming. She doesn't want to know from nothing. Yes. Right? She's like raised the family. She's like, okay, Mm -hmm. I'm doing my thing. I used to do off-Broadway. All we do is strumming. I give her a tiny bit of theory just so she understands. Mm -hmm. And she lets me do it. She'll go, oh, okay, you can tell me what the chord is. She's really (laughs) funny. She's become a friend. Uh You know, but then what I'll do is I pull up the YouTube video of what she wants on the computer Mm -hmm. and then I learn what it is I write down what it is I learn the strum she picks up her iPhone and she videos me on Skype with the strum Mm -hmm. and she has something to practice and so that's all we do so everything is totally different sounds like you take full advantage of all the technology that's available that's great oh yeah fully it's amazing Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah we live in a wondrous time yeah it is and I have other software that I use sometimes and they have software and sometime we have software glitches, mm-hmm. you know. Yep, sure, of course. I think my most amazing Skype student, by the way, was I had a blind Skype student in Washington. Okay. Who taught computer technologies for the blind. Wow. And he would blow my mind because mm-hmm. I was first learning Skype and the setting wouldn't be right. And he'd say, well, you know, go up to this. And I'd be like, whoa, dude. It's <laughs> sure. Wow, anyway, that's great. That's, but so tell us in a little more practical terms about your lessons, if you would, about, you know, how long are your lessons? How often do you meet with your students? What do you charge for your various, you know, um, lessons that you offer, whether it's Skype or in your home? Okay, well, here's the standard flow. The standard flow is if somebody already knows that they want to study with me, they just come and they start. Mm-hmm. If they're not sure or I'm not sure, I offer um, a lesson slash consultation. Mm -hmm. And they come, whether it's via Skype or we do it in person, and we dig in for like 15, 20 minutes. And if it looks like it's going to work, we continue. It turns into a paid lesson. Uh Either one of us is unsure. It's like, thank you very much. Good to meet you. Let's stay in touch. Call me. You know, I do have to be honest with you. Nine out of ten people who have a consultation with me start. Sure. You know, because by the time they get through my website or we talk on the phone, we pretty much know. Every now and then I will turn somebody away if he's Mm -hmm. not, if I can't really do justice for him. Mm -hmm. So here's a normal flow. I like to have it like once a week as much as possible Mm -hmm. to like stability and sanity into the schedule. Of course. Beginners have to do once a week. Advanced students, 
once we're grooved into my uh, methodology of just how I teach, they could come every other week. I have two guys do that now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm a returning student. I have a guy who studied with me for three years in the early 90s. He came off. He's been a professional musician the whole time, and he came back four months ago, an in-person guy, to get his reading together. I'm like, how cool is that? So anyways, people come once a week. Yes. My lessons are like $65 a lesson. Okay. When people like get eight at a time, I give them a 10% discount. Got it. And are they hour-long lessons? How long do you generally work with people? They're generally an hour long. Sometimes we finish a few minutes early. Sometimes I run over. Yes. You know, depending upon, because I don't like to leave a lesson with a student who's unsure about something. Of course. You know, because what I do traditionally for a lesson is I'll write out the assignment. I have my original consultation notes that has the goals. I always like to target a goal. Mm -hmm. I need to sing and play tunes. I need to learn something by ear. Whatever yeah. it is. Of course. You know, this, eight or ten primary goals people mm -hmm. tend to have. And then as they achieve those, I mark it off as a done. And they're like, oh, I could do that now. And yeah. then we, they, nice we feeling. Say, oh, yeah, because that yeah. way they validate what they've done and we move on. Because if anything, I'm like almost extremely overly organized. I have mm -hmm. everything at my fingertips. Um, I know where we're going. Yeah. I always have a program in mind. So anyway, so they come and then they come and they either pay in two-month periods or okay. – one less at a time. Um, I've been running my summer specials right now, mm -hmm. which is mm -hmm. like 55 a lesson, and there's a special package deal okay. that, th that I offer till the end of September that's up at my website. Mm -hmm. But that's the basic flow. Then they come once a week. We reschedule if we need. Mm -hmm. So they come back, and they walk in. We have a greeting, and then I go to number one on their lesson. And if they finished it, I mark it off. Got it. Some things are ongoing, depending upon how real the student is with an ability or skill they want to learn, mm -hmm. I might have something on their lesson in one variation or another for three months. Yes. Because they're working on, oh, I want to transcribe a song by ear. Of course. That sure. could take some time. So, um, that, and then we just carry on from there, and that's mm -hmm. the normal flow. Most of my Skype students pay two months at a time. Got it. Um, I had one guy for a while, and he just went, Every week, although it was a little much of a drag, you okay. know, it's like PayPal once a week, and uh -huh. but it's like whatever works to accomplish the goal. Of course. Um, and you know? can you tell us, Marty, a little bit, just a kind of general overview about your background? You mentioned that you've you've been in bands and you've had a lot of different experiences musically, and that you're still a working musician. Um, can you just give us a little sense of that? That you know, I'm sure people would want to know about that. Well, yeah, it's actually interesting. I mean, briefly. Mm -hmm. Did piano at five, like mm -hmm. classical, all of that. My piano's over here, by the way. Yes. With the piano students. We get into that. That's a good way to demonstrate. Sure. And then for whatever reason, I guess a lot of people from my decade got into clarinet. Okay. So I did clarinet for eight years. That's where I got wow. my treble clef reading really together. Uh-huh, uh-huh. But then it's like the British invasion occurred, mm. and so it was time for guitar. Yes. So I got a guitar and got into all of my rock bands, mm -hmm. and we did all those covers, all the 60s stuff, mm -hmm. all the Hendrix and the Beach Boys, and just like that whole bag. Yeah. And I did some flamenco studies, but as it happens with many guys, we could never find a bass player who was a musician, mm -hmm. really he, he didn't want to just go buh, 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 buh. Uh -huh. so I took up the bass, and I sort of liked it. I still mm -hmm. ended up teaching everybody else in the band um, their parts. And then by the time um, I moved along with that, I started looking at what I wanted to do as a primary instrument. So mm -hmm. that I took a bass as a primary instrument, and then I became a symphony player. And I had some, I had like teachers from the LA Phil and the Boston Phil. And yeah. the, the LA had the best of the best. Got it. It's symphony. But then for a while, I would do rock gigs on guitar. Oh. And then I would do Motown and R&B gigs on bass. And then I would do like Beethoven or Wagner. And then when I was in college, I got into composition. And that's where I got turned on to like freeform jazz. That's great, Marty. I, I hate to cut you off. There's just we only have so much time, and obviously there's quite a history there. But we I go on and on and on. I'm sure. Know. I'm sure. But clearly, the point is, you have a tremendous experience to draw from. Um, you grabbed a guitar a little earlier. We'd love to hear you do some playing. 
just so people can get a sense of what it's like to for you, uh, you know, with your own guitar playing. Is there something sure. you can play for us? Just give us a little taste of a song or some lead, whatever you might like to do. Well, let's see. What's a cool thing? There's a gazillion guitar players. Sure. Around. Well, two two examples. One okay. of them is my, my Minnesota singer will pull up a tune, whether it's a Pearl Jam tune or she's into a lot of hot lady chick kind of tunes. Yeah. Um, right, if you could just come a little bit to your left, that'd be great, just so we can get. Yeah, there you go. That's perfect. Oh, over there. Oh, Thank well, you. because we have the frame right yeah, there. Yeah, there you go. So if she's going to like strum, we'll go. We'll work on alternating strumming lines. Uh-huh, uh-huh. We'll do exercises, whatever that is. Okay, or uh-huh. if a country guy, we'll get into... We get into all the alternating root fifth kind of a bass. Of course, of course, we'll that's do- crucial. I had an interesting um, new Skype student start recently. She's a professional singer wanting to learn to improvise on a guitar. So we started off with a scale that she sort of knew. And I would have her sing and play improv. That's a great exercise. Yeah. Oh, um, do do da da, do do da da do da. Yeah, nice. Sort of a call and response kind of thing, right? Yeah, and that's part of the whole ear training game. Yeah. So her whole first two lessons, actually, we just jumped into the end. What do you know? You know a scale. Good. Mm-hmm. What's your goal? I need to improvise. I'm like, yeah. good. Yeah. Okay. Just like jumped into it, and then uh, right. here's and- the idea. I have another question for you. What kind of do you do you offer students um, advice about purchasing their instruments? Do you ever help people with that? Most definitely, to the degree that I can. I mean, I'm not always updated on all the newest guitar gear. Yes. But especially when the beginners, especially with the beginning and intermediate peer, um, players, there's that point where they need to upgrade. Mm. And so I definitely guide them into what is going to determine mm-hmm. what they want to do. It's the sound, the way it feels, the way it looks, what bands do you like. So I definitely help and guide people. And sometimes I'll go to the store if they're local and check out instruments for them as well if they're okay. in that. That's great. Cool. You know, I had teachers do that to me, and I like to do that in return. That's great that you do that. Cool. Well, Marty, yeah. listen, it's been so great to hear about your teaching today. And um, obviously, anybody who works with you is very lucky to have you as a teacher because you have so much to offer. So it's been great to hear all about it. Cool. Well, thank you very much, and thanks for the interview. It's been really fun. Um, Absolutely. I always love it. So, yeah, good. Sure. Look, thanks. Absolutely. We look forward to seeing you on findaguitarteacher.com in the future. Me too, and thank you for the day. And if we're done, have a wonderful day. And, and anybody yeah, listening, please. feel free to give me a phone call. Sounds good. All right, Marty, thanks again. Have a great day. You too.